I'm following the directions that are in the tips and techniques that's a free download on my website uh, for knitting a buttonhole band. And so I've cast on 39 stitches and I'll explain that why in a minute. Uh, with waist yarn, one row of ravel cord, and then I've knitted four rows of the main yarn on a stitch size or stitch tension two numbers lower than what I've knitted my garment at. So in this case it's stitch size five. And now I'm going to manually knit back the needles that I'm going to use for the buttonhole with a separate piece of ravel cord. And I've spaced it out so that if I begin the first one, two stitches from the end, and then hand knit three needles, I can skip five, and then hand knit the next three. And I generally find that it's easiest if I do all my counting first, and select the needles so that I don't get all the way across and find out that I've made a mistake. And that's going to work just fine. Now this separate strand could loosen up so to prevent that from happening I'll just hang a clip on each end to give it a little bit of weight so that hopefully the next row of stitches knits properly. And I'm going to knit four more rows with the slightly smaller stitch size. Make sure all the buttonholes knitted properly, and they did. And then for my next row, I want a turning row, a crease, because this is half the depth of my band. So what I'm going to do is knit one row of garter stitch. And to do that, I'm going to remove the yarn from the carriage, free pass the carriage to the other side, and bring all my needles forward. And I'm also going to hang an additional weight here in the middle just to make sure that all the stitches transfer cleanly. And I'm using an old-fashioned garter bar here. I happen to have one that was cut for a shorter length and it's absolutely perfect here. And then I'll pull all the stitches onto the garter bar. Weights and clips and everything else with it starting at one end and moving all the way to the other side uninterrupted. Push open the latches, remove the bar, turn the work over, and then I'm going to line up the heads of the needles with the grooves underneath. And transfer it on. I've got all the stitches, and I'll pull out the bar. And I can see that over on this side, I dropped a stitch. So let's fix that one first and foremost. There. And now I'm going to push all the stitches back on the needles, re-thread the carriage, and knit one row across. And that's what's going to give me the turning edge on the band. Now I'll do one more row of garter stitch. Move the carriage to the other side. Try to do it this time without dropping any stitches. Make sure all my latches are open. There's one here that isn't. And then hook on the garter bar. Make sure I've caught every needle. Remove the work, turn it back over again, and then once again line up the heads of the needles, the hooks, with the grooves underneath the garter bar. I hope I get them all. Turn and check it, and it looks like there's just one here. And what I normally will do for one stitch is just use a transfer tool and lift it up. Then I'll re-thread the carriage and get my weights over where I need them. I'm going to get rid of all of these clips because I've got enough rows knitted that I don't have to worry about the stitches loosening up. Okay. 
and I'll knit four more rows. Now I'm going to pick up this top edge as it faces you of the buttonhole and hang it on the needles above. And in this case, I'm going to pick up four loops. It has to do with the way stitches are formed, and I'm actually picking them up upside down from the way that I knitted them. So instead of three loops, you can see that the ravel cord is interacting with four stitches, so that's what I need to pick up. And it will change the spacing up top, so instead of five stitches between each buttonhole, there will be four. So I'll get all of these picked up first. Okay, before I begin, I saved an extra piece of my main yarn, and I'm going to use that to do the binding off. And because I want this to be very, very even, what I'm going to do is a sinker post bind off. Where I'll pass the stitch behind the post, hook it on, and then bring the needle forward with both stitches. This will ensure a couple of things. First of all, that the edge is nice and straight. Second of all, that I don't tighten up on any of the stitches and it will prevent the garment from pulling while it's hanging here on the machine. So that's the first buttonhole knitted together. And now I'm going to just carry this yarn loosely from one buttonhole to the next. This float will be hidden inside the band so you don't need to worry about it showing or certainly wouldn't justify starting a second third and fourth piece of yarn. Now, before I can continue, I need to get these loops off of the posts because it will prevent the knitting from dropping down. So although it's a help while you're doing it, you don't want to leave it up there for the whole time. So that gives me one finished edge on the buttonhole and the second finished edge comes from the stitches that I initially knitted off onto the ravel cord. So I'm going to pick up those three stitches now and hang them on the empty needles. I'll put my weights back on and knit four more rows to complete my band. Before I attach the band to the garment, I like to make sure that my buttonholes are correct. Otherwise, you're going through the rest of the work for nothing. And if I look, Right there, I've got perfectly beautiful buttonholes. Now what I need to do is sandwich the fabric, the front edge of my little cardigan or whatever I'm knitting, and then I'll be raising up these stitches. Okay, I'm ready to attach uh, the band to my little garment here. And back here when I said I'd tell you why I only cast on 39 stitches, here's the reason. I knitted 52 rows for the front of my little cardigan here and usually when you're picking up rows and turning them into stitches you pick up about three out of every four rows which in this case translates to 39 stitches. Now I'm going to uh, poke the needles through the edge of my garment about two stitches in from the edge which happens to be right along the 
edge of the cable that I've added here and normally I would cover the bed with a towel or some paper towels so that I don't get my garment all greasy but if I do that here you're not going to be able to see what my hands are doing so I'm going to remove that covering so that it's a little bit clearer for you and I'm going to begin by poking through say two needles at the very end of the fabric here and just enough to catch it and then I'm going to poke through a couple at the other end to make sure that my garment uh, does in fact fit with the band and it looks like it's stretching just fine so then I will start bringing my needles through one at a time staying in the same line of stitches and I'm only pushing through far enough at this point to, uh, to catch the garment in the hooks of the needles. If I allow the needles to come through any further than that, they're very likely um, to, let, to let the garment slip behind the latches. And then if I pull a little bit too hard one way or the other, I run the risk of dropping. So for now, the safest place is to keep the edge of the garment right in the hooks of the needles and to poke them all through and then we'll go to the next step. Perfect. So now I'm going to push the needles out a little bit further so that I do get the stitches back further. Actually out to upper work position is usually enough. When you've got a towel over the bed back here to protect the garment you don't have quite as clear access to see what your hands are doing but there's no way around it you will get the garment greasy if you don't cover the bed and then I'm going to come back to the first edge of my band which was started on waist yarn and I'm going to start hanging the stitches I've got a couple that tightened up a little here so I'm just gonna open them up a bit and I'm going to hang one stitch onto each needle. And when I'm done with this step, I will have enclosed the edge of the garment, in this case a, uh, a selvage edge, but it could just as easily have been a, uh, a raw edge, perhaps uh, short road stitches around a neckline that have been uh, bound off as one or surged on a, uh, a serger because if you just put live stitches inside here on the band, you always run the risk of the uh, garment running because you may not catch every stitch when you do this bind off. I'm going to bring the needles all the way out now to holding position. Make sure I've caught everything, that I haven't skipped any stitches. Okay, and then I'm going to put my weights back on and there's one more step. I'm going to manually knit each of these needles back to a point about halfway between working and non-working position. So here's working position, here's non-work. I'm knitting the needles back to about that point. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to have big enough stitches that I can chain them off with the latch tool without adding any extra yarn. It's going to be just a straight chain. I want to try to knit them all about the same size, as close as you can, but as I said, you'll have a towel over those those needle butts and you're going to have to reach your hand underneath and work fairly blind with a full-size garment here. You won't be able to see as much as you're seeing right now. And the fastest way to do this is slowly and deliberately to make sure that you always have yarn in the hook of the needle as you knit it past and that the latches don't split on the fabric as they go through. Now I'll lift the garment over, make sure it's not caught on any of the posts. And you can see I've got nice big 
very generous stitches there. So I'm going to bring the fabric forward on the bed. And then I'm going to do a yarnless chain. That just means chaining one stitch through the next without adding any extra yarn to the stitches. So I'll catch a new stitch in the hook. The old stitch is behind the latch. Just pull it right through. And you can do it as I am by hooking on to the needle. Some people like to just catch, oops, just catch the stitch itself. It's up to you. Whichever method you find the easiest. And after I've gotten a few of them chained, I'm just going to catch the edge of the fabric on the end of the bed there so that um, I'm not hanging by fewer and fewer stitches and I won't risk stretching the front of the garment or the bind off. This chained effect will show on the inside of the garment. The outside will look very much like a back stitch, uh, identical to the way it would look if you used a linking machine to do this. Now, linking machines, for the most part, have their prongs set for standard gauge fabrics. So with bulky and mid-gauge, you may find that this is just as good a way to attach a sandwich band as trying to space it out on a linker. Just be very careful because you don't want to start losing stitches now. You've got too many layers of fabric to deal with and it will be tricky, if not sometimes impossible, to get back to a point where you can fix it. And then the very last one. Pull the end of the yarn through to secure it. So, here's the inside of the band, and as I said, the chained effect is on the inside. There's our perfect buttonholes, and then the waist yarn here on the front can be pulled away by tugging on the ravel cord and removing it. And there you have perfect buttonholes and a sandwich band enclosing the edge of your fabric.